What is up guys, it's me, YouTuber, and you've already missed out on a bit of the adventure today. I uh, spent $62 on a take of fuel at the gas station, um, which isn't terrible by today's standards. Um, and then a random guy got a ride for me after talking to me about my car for a little bit. That seems to always happen at this gas station. Not the ride part, but the talking to me about my, my cars. Um, there's always someone that's like, hey, is this, uh, this, that, or the other? And they're usually right, so they know what they're talking about, but it's just weird. This one gas station, no other gas stations. Maybe it's because I frequent this one. Anyway, he started telling me he's got a white Alpina B7 um, that he's restoring, that he bought cheap from auction. Uh, that could be interesting. Um, and then he proceeded to ask me for a ride, uh, which I did give him, because um, I'm not heartless. But, yeah, no, he seems to know his stuff. It was kind of cool talking to him. He's a cool guy. Uh, it's just funny that, you know, he's got an Alpina B7 and he's asking me for a ride home from the gas station. Um, but hey, it's a nice day. He was going for a walk. Can't blame him. Might rain later. Also can't blame him for wanting a ride. Anyway, um, so three orders of operations today. Stopping by the junkyard to get a new inlet pipe for the M3. Um, the old one's just disintegrating and it's disgusting and it's kind of sad and laughable. Um, but then second thing, what is the second thing? Uh, Got to refill the power steering pump, power steering reservoir, because it is completely empty. Uh, it's buried in the engine bay in this car. I can't explain it. All my other cars, the reservoir is like readily accessible. Not this car. Uh, it's down like, not under the intake manifold, but just about. Um, so that'll be a little bit of an adventure. Um, and then third thing, we're installing the new ignition switch. Uh, saving the worst for last. Uh, that's how we do it around here. And so hopefully after that, the car will just run and drive. Uh, it'll be turnkey, be ready to go. And um, I'll take you along for the, the first ride. That'll be cool. All right, so we start our tour of the junkyard here. The Beamer, the, the E36 department is severely lacking at the moment. But man, someone needs to save this 240Z. Sorry for any wind noise. We're on a uh, certified Android camera spec right now. I really wanted the interior out of this E46 at one point, but as you can see, it's gone very downhill, unfortunately. It's because some, uh, some big brain individual took the sunroof out. This thing was mint, by the way. Like, it was clearly garage capped, but yeah, whatever. 300ZX. How about this little Triumph? I think it's a TR8. I'm not sure. It doesn't have a V8, but... Check out this absolute gem. It's like a freaking shuttle from Star Trek. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. This WRX kills me. Because everything's here. Like, there's nothing visually wrong with it. Someone just stripped it out and pulled all the body panels off. It's ridiculous. This is my favorite body style, too. Man. Someone needs to save this. Mmm. Blue on blue Camry. Mmm. Blue. Look at that blue. Delicious. Y'all just got got. OSHA approved. Yo, someone better come save this Macy Ferguson. Yo, this puppy's mint. Mm. Man, who would junk this? Just found a minty Volkswagen rabbit. Mm, look at that patina. That's not the most interesting part. No. Get a load of this. Yo, you need to run a refrigerator? There you go. Dude, I can't believe this. They scrapped my E36 and replaced it with a Jeep and a Nissan. How am I supposed to fix my M3? Dude, where'd my 7 Series go? What's going on? The Beamer department has been scrapped. Dude, all of the BMWs are gone. There used to be an E34, there was a 7 Series. This is all that's left of the 7 Series, is two fake Mpars. This is tragic. What's going on? Well, that was an absolute tragedy. Um, they were stacked with BMWs, like good parts. They scrapped all of them. 
the lady at the front desk is like, hey, they must have done it when I wasn't here or something, because I wouldn't let that happen. But uh, they're gone. Um, so I guess I'm buying cheap Chinese crap off Amazon. Um, <laughs> I'm not spending money on, on genuine BMW on this M3. That's, I'm sorry to the next owner, but that's your problem. Um, I'm just gonna make something that works. I think I'm just gonna duct tape the tear in the, the existing um, little intake piece. Let me show you what it is. Never mind, I threw it in the trunk. I'll show it to you later. Uh, but it's just a little inlet that goes from the air box to the actual uh, throttle body itself. So, anyway, off to Amazon and then off to the M3. We'll, we'll see if we can still drive it today. Uh, that would. That would fix my my disappointment. All right, so I lied. We're not starting with the power steering fluid. Um, we're gonna start with the ignition switch. I'm gonna work on replacing that. Uh, I hope the wind isn't too much of a problem. Um, it's pretty breezy today. Uh, hopefully you can hear me all right. But I don't have power steering fluid right now. I'm gonna have to run out and get some more later. Um, but we'll just start with what we got. So the plan is pretty simple. Um, just to recap, uh, the threads that hold the ignition switch in place, they stripped out. Well, not the threads, but the, the head of the screw itself. It's a flathead screw and it had corroded itself in place. That's stripped out. So I brought the drill. I'm gonna drill out the old grub screws that hold the ignition switch into the column. And then I have a set of taps here. I'm gonna find the closest um, tap that I can find. Uh, cut some new threads and I'll buy matching hardware to whatever the new threads that I cut are. Um, so that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. I'm being a little creative here. I'm not sure how it's really going to work, but I'm optimistic. So we're beginning our adventures by removing the panel under here so I can get to the second grub screw on the ignition. Oh man, that is nasty in there. Woo. I'm gonna contract some, all this dust. Oh man. This isn't ideal, um, but I think it'll give me enough room to work up in here, um, to drill things out and do all that. So I'm just gonna let it hang here. I don't think it's hurting anything. All right, so got a drill, got a jug of water to keep the tip cool. Um, gonna give this a go. Wish me luck. That ought to help. I do believe that's got it. It's definitely loose. It's, it wants to come out, it's very close. do it. I just gotta find the plug and uh, pull that on out. So I've got the new igni ignition switch here. Uh, I'm just gonna use the length of the wire to try to figure out where the plug is located. It doesn't seem like anyone on YouTube has shown how to replace this switch itself. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're, we're blazing new trails here. It would be much easier if this support wasn't here, but I don't know what this is or what it does. And I don't know how to remove it either, so. Hopefully we can work around it. I think I found it. I think my hand's on it right now. It looks like I've located the switch. I think it's that one there. The wires line up at least. So I'm gonna try wiggling that out. All right, so the plug is like nearly impossible to take off with this in the way. Um, there's some nuts in each one of these little holes. I'm gonna take those out and hopefully this panel comes off with that. Yeah, it's it, it's held on with the three. Oh, glad we saw that. That makes it a lot easier. Bing, bing, piece of metal. Well, it's mostly foam, surprisingly. All right, so there is the connector. Oh, that's much easier to get to. There we go. That is unplugged. Throw the 
trash in the back. Out with the old quick visual inspection. It appears to be identical. So I got this little screw and I'm going to use two of them. Um, I think they'll cut their own threads. Regardless, they'll hold everything in place well enough. This is a bit of a hoopty fix, um, but if this will focus, you can see the two screws that I put in there. Um, they weren't really self-tapping screws, though they tapped themselves into place, um, and everything is held in very secure, and everything works as it should. Everything works as it should. Cool. So what I was saying earlier about the power steering reservoir, um, it's right there, just buried. All the other cars, it's like up top, easily accessible, but not on this one. Anyway, so we'll get a funnel to feed down into there. The inside of that? Yeah, I already did. There's fluid in there. And this is Dexron 3 automatic transmission fluid. That's what the internet said. I really don't know how much to put in. Yeah, that looks perfect. It's up to whatever the top line is, so hopefully that's hopefully the top line is the fill line. <laughs> All right, only other thing is to duct tape this inlet boot and put it back on and hopefully it'll work. This thing is gonna be an absolute hoopty. Gotta get it on film. Beautiful repair. <laughs> just sell the car like this. <laughs> be a little more honest. Add some pumps. There we go. Okay. <laughs> just spiders and spider webs all over. Ew! Ew! Get off! Maybe I should have put it on before. It's good enough. So there's an O-ring in there that seals the air box to the map. Alright, that is connected. Say that's on there good enough. As good as that. Alright. Everything should be ready to go. It's just a matter of starting it and driving it. Moves under its own power, running out of camera battery, so hopefully we'll make this quick, but <laughs> we're gonna take it for a short trip down the street. You can toss that in the back. Oh, what a beautiful piece of German steel. All right, I'm gonna give you the camera. 
why I even bother seat belting. We're not going out on the road. Clutch feels disgusting, but it engages fine. It the clutch doesn't bottom out at all. Is the, the problem? Makes it feel funny. Brakes. Yep. Brakes make a lot of noise. Yeah, try them. There we go. Yeah. That's a good call. <laughs> that would be exciting. It all seems to work. The idle drops a lot, which I think has to do with the vacuum leaks to the idle air control valve. Easy. Easy. That's good. I wasn't pushing it at all. It was like 2,500 RPM. The fan clutch is stuck on, which kind of sucks, but. Temperature's not rising a whole lot. I guess I'll give it a little bit of time. When I sat and ran it the other day, it never got up past like a quarter. It never quite made it to the temperature range. What a piece of junk. It, it drives though, it works. Oh, this is great. I'm driving an E36 M3. I thought it was a little wider. That'll work. Reverse works. Excellent. Everything squeaks. It's decently smooth. Stinks. <laughs> Steering's loose. Steering's very loose. It's a pretty sharp ratio though. It's sportier than the 540 is. Should I give it a little bit of juice? Just a little bit. But I want to see what it'll do. Just a little bit. Wait till it gets up to temperature. <laughs> you go back and look at what you have first. Yeah. I agree. Is that a stick you picked up? Yeah, I think it's a stick. You really hear everything when you're missing a rear window. And you smell the exhaust. And you smell the exhaust. Yeah, maybe it would be good to roll the windows down. I have a feeling they wouldn't ro be very willing to roll back up. It might need brake pads. It sounds healthy. Let's take a look before yeah. you... <laughs> Sorry, I'm excited. That tapping sound, it seems like it's quieted down a little bit. It's quieted down quite a bit, actually. Well, it's still definitely there. It's hard to say. I want to say it's a lifter. It sounds similar to the sound that this car originally made. Um, yeah. I don't know, it smells like burning oil, but it's to be expected, I suppose. It's not too loud. I, I do, from, from what I've read, it does seem like these engines are a little bit noisier. Don't see anything dripping. You see anything dripping? <laughs> Hot up top, which I assume means that coolant is flowing. The thermostat is stuck open if it's not getting up to temperature. It's it's creeping up. Yeah, it's going up. It is. Well, you gotta get even with it. I uh, guess I can't. Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. It's just slow. It it might be stuck open though. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Let's check lights. It's all seem to be working for the most part. Both tail lights work. You said one of the brake lights was out? Left brake light. Left brake light. That's what she was pulled over for, the lady who I bought it from, and uh, she ended up parking it because she got a, well, I think she got a warning and an inspection ticket. 
she stuck a blue LED light in the tail light as though it was a brake light. And the cops didn't like it, believe it or not. Still think E36s are butt ugly, but they might grow on me a little bit. They might already have. Want to go for another, another spin? <laughs> Don't worry about that. That's just the rearview mirror <laughs> and some other miscellaneous uh, steering column bits. We are just about up to temperature. Yeah, I do think you're right about the thermostat being stuck open because of the way it wasn't getting hot the other day. It was much colder. It was like in the 40s, it was like 43, I think. And today it's in the 70s. It's a very easy car to drive. It's very smooth. I just don't like the way the clutch doesn't bottom out. It, it's just mushy when you get down bottom. Like, what on earth could that possibly be making all that rain? <laughs> oh, boy. And it needs brakes according to this. And it's got check engine light that I may or may not take the time to scan what it is. It's a rattly, creaky convertible. Oh, this poor car. How could anyone neglect it to this level? quick above 3500 it wants to go I don't want to push it super hard it does make me wonder what a coupe or a sedan would feel like because they are this is a much heavier vehicle I was running the numbers on the power to weight and it was better than my e34 525i but nowhere near my my e39 540 Definitely have to be above 3,500 for it to have any guts, but it's not bad. It does make me wonder what the Euro cars that made like 320, 340, wonder what they felt like. No, it's it's a sporty car for sure. That's kind of fun. I get it. I get it, but I'm not keeping it. <laughs> Not when it's worth as much as it is in the pathetic state that it's in. No, that's cool though. It, it sounds pretty good. I It's bassier. I, I want to know what it sounds like um, without the fan clutch permanently on. <laughs> no rear view mirror, just the side mirrors. That's unsettling. Oh, but I got the full open air experience if I just turn around. Amazing. It's sounding healthy. I'm gonna pop the, the hood one more time and did it go in fifth to gear? It. I didn't try. Yeah, fifth gear is there. Okay, just need to exercise. Yep. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Running driving M3 for undisclosed amount of money that I will discuss once I sell it. So, I forgot to film an outro again. Sorry about that, I'm still new to this, so I hope you can cut me a little bit of slack. Um, but the car runs and drives. Uh, that's great, where do we go from here? Um, I would really like to keep it and restore it, that would be really cool. Um, I'd really like to S52 swap the E34, that would also be very cool. Um, but time and money are two things that I don't have an infinite supply at the moment. Um, and this car for what I bought it for I'm sitting on a big potential profit here so I, I, I've mentioned it a couple times throughout the video in the last video but I do think I am just gonna sell it um, pass it on to someone else who can you know make it their project and uh, and I'll make a healthy pro um, a healthy profit in the meantime and uh, put that towards my current projects and future projects uh, down the road uh, that I can make videos of so you know, that's just what I'm thinking right now uh, for the time being, so I'll definitely uh, make more videos um, on this car before I sell it. Uh, I'll get it ready for sale and then I'll make another video uh, discussing 
profits, uh, the circumstances of the car, um, just sort of conclusions for the project in general. Um, and yeah, that'll be cool. And I hope uh, if you like these last couple of videos I've been shooting that maybe you'd be interested in, in subscribing um, and checking out some of my other videos, uh, seeing my other content that I come out with. Um, again, I am new to this, uh, but you know, I'm jumping in head first and having fun with it. So I hope you might uh, tag along for the ride. Anyway, I appreciate it. Thanks.